So each year, more than two million people are bitten by venomous snakes. This leads to 100 to 150,000 deaths and about 400,000 cases of amputation and other permanent disability. It's typically children and young adults, either playing or working in the field, that fall victim to snake bite. They come from the poorest, most rural parts of the tropics, where they live with snake bite and venoming as a daily threat. About eight years ago, I was traveling in Tanzania. I was just there to go on safari and see the incredible wildlife. But on this trip, I passed a snake bite clinic. And here I saw two victims of spitting cobras. One was a girl about the age of eight who'd been amputated by the elbow, and the other one, a young boy around the age of five, had been amputated by the knee. So of course, even before this trip, I knew that getting bitten by a venomous snake was a serious medical emergency. But I had expected that if you got bitten, but managed to get to a clinic within time, that you would be able to get better treatment than amputation. So this made quite a strong impression on me, and it turned out to have a big impact on my future career. So six years ago, I decided that I wanted to do something about snakebite. I decided that I wanted to become a scientist and help develop better antivenoms. So six years later, today, I head an academic research group where we're using modern biotechnological techniques to develop better snakebite antivenoms. So if you're bitten by a snake, quite a few different things can happen, depending on the snake species. As an example of the, the two children that I met in Tanzania that had been bitten by spitting cobras, here, the toxins, they went in and they caused severe local tissue damage. And that's because the toxins in this particular venom, they go in and they destroy muscles, flesh and skin. But there's also other classical symptoms of snake bite. In many viper bites, other toxins will go in and interfere with your blood's ability to coagulate, and this will cause internal bleeding. In many cobra and mamba bites, neurotoxins will go in and interfere with your muscles' ability to move around. They will basically paralyze you, and this may cause uh, your death if your uh, muscles around your lungs are paralyzed. So quite a lot of different things can happen if you're bitten by a snake. But fortunately, we have antivenoms, don't we? Antivenoms have been around for more than 100 years, and they are still the only thing that will save your life if you're bitten by a venomous snake. The, they can neutralize toxins, but unfortunately, they do come with some drawbacks. Antivenoms are made in a way where you first take a snake and you, you milk it for its venom, then you take the venom and you inject it into a horse. And over a year or a year and a half where you give continuous injections, the horse's immune system will raise an antibody response. And once these antibodies are ready, you can draw blood from the horse, isolate the horse's antibodies and put them in a vial. And you're now ready to uh, save a snake bite victim by injecting these antibodies directly into his or her veins. So the good thing is, it works. These antibodies, they can neutralize toxins. But as said, they come with a number of drawbacks. Because when you take something from a horse and inject it into a human being, the human immune system will see it as a, as a foreign threat. And it will launch a hyperallergic reaction. And in very severe cases, these hyperallergic reactions can be serum sickness, which is a, a nasty infliction that may persist for weeks. Uh, it has some of the same symptoms as malaria. But in very bad cases, uh, injecting horse antibodies into a human may cause full-blown anaphylaxis. You might know anaphylaxis from your friends that are allergic to bees or wasps. If they're stung by a bee or a wasp, their body will go in a hyperallergic response mode that can very easily cause their death. It's the same with antivenoms except that it's just much more serious. You might know that you cannot just receive a blood transfusion from any other person, that you need to take the donor's blood type into account. With antivenoms, you're not just taking something from a different person. 
you're taking antibodies from a completely different species. There's another complication with existing antivenoms, and that is that the antibodies present in an antivenom vial don't all work, because they're taken from all the antibodies from the horse, and the horse has encountered bacteria, viruses, allergens during its life. So many of these antibodies that we have taken and put in the vial, they don't actually neutralize toxins, but they still come with some of these uh, side effects. So there's really an opportunity for doing something about antivenom. And that's exactly what my lab does. We're using modern biotechnological techniques to make antivenoms that are not based on horse antibodies. Instead, we are using these techniques to make fully human antibodies that are both safe to administer to human patients and that can be produced by fermentation in big steel tanks, basically just like brewing beer. So I believe that some of these antivenoms, uh, they have the potential uh, to become safer, more affordable, and, and also cause less, uh, be more effective and cause less side effects in patients worldwide. So let me explain how we, how we do this. So in my research, we wanted to create an experimental antivenom against the black mamba's venom. And the black mamba is quite a notorious snake. It can grow to lengths of four and a half meters. It can raise 50% of its body off the ground, which basically means that it can sort of look down on a short Viking like myself. It's known for biting more than once. It's known for always injecting venom, unlike some snakes that deliver so-called dry bites, where no venom is injected. And it can slither faster than any human being can run, even the people in the Olympics. My snake expert friends say that no venomous snake is aggressive towards humans. But from what I've heard, the black mamba is then quite uh, proactively defensive. <laughs> so in order to develop an antivenom against uh, this snake, we first needed to know what is actually in the venom, what toxins are present. And to do this, I had the pleasure of traveling to Costa Rica to work with professors and researchers that are some of the leading experts on snake bite and who have developed protocols for analyzing what is in different snake venoms. And using their protocols, we could separate the different toxins in the black mamba venom and figure out what are the toxins and which ones are likely to be important to neutralize in a human envenoming case. And basically what we found out is that there's two major types of toxins in the black mamba venom. There's the so-called alpha neurotoxins that will paralyze your muscles. And then there's a different type of neurotoxins that will cause involuntary muscle contractions and spasms. And these spasms, they will tire out your muscles so that what you experience if you're bitten by a black mamba is a potent sort of double neurotoxic challenge that will cause your death if you're not treated. So after having found out what toxins to neutralize, I needed to find the antibodies. And to do this, I traveled to England in uh, Cambridge, where I had the pleasure of working at the company IONTAS, uh, where the, the people there are some of the world-leading experts in finding fully human antibodies against pretty much anything. And they were willing to teach me this expertise and invite me into their lab and help me find human antibodies against black mamba toxins. And the way we did this was by using a technique called phage display. And phage display has been used to find some of the top-selling drugs in the world against cancer and autoimmune diseases, but it can also be used to find antibodies against snake bite. So the way it works is that phage display basically simulates the human immune system in a laboratory vial. This means that you don't need to take a human and inject him or her with snake toxins and isolate the antibodies from, from the person. You can do everything in the lab, in petri dishes. So we used this technique to find the first panel of fully human antibodies that could neutralize black mamba venom in mice. So this was really promising. We had developed a new approach for generating fundamentally new types of antivenoms that have the potential to be both safer and more effective and more affordable to distribute to victims worldwide. So I believe that these methods that we've created, they have this potential, but we're not quite there yet. It typically takes 10 years and quite significant funding to bring a, a drug to the market. And to make things even more challenging, 
if you're a treating physician and you receive a snake bite victim, you don't want to be in a situation where you have to guess what snake bit the person in order to choose the right antivenom. So it's important that antivenoms are kind of broad spectrum and cover multiple different snake species. So some of the things that we're working on in my lab is to isolate and select human antibodies that can neutralize toxins from multiple different snake species. And I believe that we can do this and create antivenoms that might cover entire geographical areas such as Sub-Saharan Africa, India, or Brazil. So snakes, they will always be around, and more bites are bound to happen. Unfortunately, we can't just change that. But my hope is that when your kids or my kids, 20 years from now, go to a snake bite clinic, that all patients will be treated with effective antivenom, and that no one will have to lose limbs or their lives due to snake bite. Thank you.